film starts in an investment bank's offices, where the employees are apprehensive since everyone knows a huge number of employees are soon to be laid off. A man named Will Emerson notices two rookies who look terrified. He asks them if they have ever seen such a thing, to which they say no. Then they tell them to play it cool and keep working. A woman approaches us an employee named Peter to ask him about Eric Dale. The most shocking development is that Eric Dale, who had worked there for the previous 19 years and held the position of head of risk management, was fired as well. Before he leaves, he issues a warning to them about a model that he has been working on, but they pay little attention to him. He is told that it has nothing to do with him personally and that today will result in the termination of many other employees' jobs. Will Emerson, the head of credit trading, pays Eric a visit while he is collecting up his belongings in his office. After Will expresses his sorrow, Eric asks who chose him, and Will admits that it was Sarah, which puts Eric in an even worse attitude. Eric also tries to persuade Will to look at his model, but Will likewise refuses, claiming that it is no longer Eric's concern. Eric receives sympathy from his now former employees, Peter Sullivan and Seth Bregman, on his way out. When Peter expresses his gratitude for everything Eric has done for him, Eric seizes the opportunity and hands him the pin drive with his model, warning him to be cautious. Eric knows as he exits the building that they have already turned off his phone, so when Chief Risk Management Officer Sarah Robertson arrives, he curses her for placing him in this position. Meanwhile, Floor leader Sam Rogers is struggling because he received a phone call from the vet informing him that his dog is dying from a tumor. Will goes to check on him and informs him that 80% of the floor that has been dismissed has already departed. So Sam goes out and gives an encouraging speech to the remaining 33 employees, reminding them that this is a great opportunity for them to flourish. Except for two employees, when night falls, Everyone goes out to celebrate keeping their jobs. Sam leaves to see his dog, while Peter stays at the office to check over the files Eric left him. The model is unfinished, but Peter completes it, and the end product is rather scary. He tries to call Eric, but he no longer has his phone, so he phones Seth and requests that he bring Will back as quickly as possible since there is an emergency. When they arrive, Peter reveals to him what he has discovered. Historical volatility levels in mortgage-backed securities have been exceeded, and the debt acquired as a result of those over-leveraged assets is threatening to collapse the company. Will attempts to reach Eric at his house, but his wife informs him that he has not returned. Will believes he knows where they can find him, so he gives Peter and Seth the address of Eric's favorite bar and instructs them to bring him over while he calls his employer. Sam is not amused at having to return to the workplace at 11 p.m. but turns up regardless when he learns it is an emergency. He is surprised to see the numbers on the screen that forecast a bleak future for the company and requests that will summon Peter immediately. Since they gave up on finding Eric immediately, Peter and Seth have been drinking and watching dancers in a bar. When Will calls them back to the office, they are led to an emergency meeting with Sarah, division head Jared Cohen, and other top executives. Sarah assures Jared that, while they will undertake a comprehensive double check of the files, she can immediately tell from Peter's credentials that the material is correct. Panicking at 2 a.m., Jared asks Sam how long it would take his team to clear everything from their books. Sam claims it will take weeks, but no matter how long it takes, it is a horrible idea since it will ruin the company's reputation. Sarah joins in, noting that calculating the value of these things would take her a long time as well. Will, Peter, and Seth are ordered to leave the room because the high-ups are having a heated fight. Jared insists on selling everything, which Sam finds absurd, so Sarah urges him to wait 45 minutes while she thoroughly reviews the facts before making any rash decisions. Jared chooses to contact their CEO because they are unlikely to find a quick answer. Meanwhile, 
Will, Peter, and Seth smoke on the roof. Will remarks, after joking about jumping, that things are a disaster, but the high ups will still preserve the company because they always find a way to avoid losing money, even if it means screwing everyone else over. A chopper arrives unexpectedly, interrupting their conversation. The big guns are here. Back to Sarah. She goes to see Jared to tell him everything is fine, and Jared blames her for not trusting Eric more. After that, everyone prepares for yet another meeting, so Jared delivers some advice to the lesser employees. Things are about to get unpleasant, so they must always tell the truth and not sugarcoat anything. The meeting is being led by the firm's CEO, John Told, and all stockholders have also been summoned in the middle of the night. Peter discusses the problem once more, and Jared suggests that they sell everything tonight as a solution. Sam emphasizes that, while this is conceivable, they would be selling worthless assets through lies, which would harm the company's reputation and prevent them from ever selling to these people again. This would kill the stock market for years. However, John is unconcerned. All he wants is for the company to thrive. Since it is 5 a.m., he gives everyone an hour to rest and find Eric before they get started on their plan. Following that, John meets with Sam privately to solicit his support, but Sam remains apprehensive. Sarah urges Jared not to screw her over with whatever tactic he picks, or she will bring him down with her. Eric's wife calls the company to inform them that her husband has returned home, but he refuses to speak with them. Sam dispatches Will and Seth to pick him up, warning them not to alert John's people or he will be scared off. Meanwhile, John goes by Sarah's office to warn her she will function as the scapegoat for the firm's over-leveraged condition and begs her to retire following the fire sale. Sarah informs him that she tried to warn him and Jared about this but was ignored, but John warns her that she is not in the position to fight over anything. At the very least, he pledges to pay her handsomely. Will and Seth are waiting for a car in the garage when they are approached by Jared, who explains his and John's worries about Sam possibly opposing the fire sale. He wants to know if Will will step in if Sam doesn't, but Will avoids the topic by claiming he is confident Sam will do the right thing. Will and Seth arrive at Eric's house a few moments later, and Will proceeds to explain what is going on. He invites Eric to return for only one day, but Eric declines, only to be met by a mysterious automobile. It is John's men who refuse to leave any loose ends. We'll leave Eric to speak to them with one more warning. If he does not accept their offer, they will fight him over the perks they promised. Seth asks Will on the way back if he will lose his job, and Will says sure. Seth has enough money in his account to last him a few months but he is concerned about what would happen to normal people if this goes wrong. Will chastise him for such thinking, reminding him that if he cares about ordinary people, who get furious at them when they make errors but live happy lives the rest of the time because of their work, he will not survive in this company. Back at the office, John approaches Sam with a substantial monetary offer in an attempt to get his support, but Sam reiterates that he is on the side of the company's future. Following that, Sam is approached by Peter, who wants to know if he will be fired. Sam believes he will most likely, but he will also lose his job because no one will be protected after this catastrophe. Peter wonders if this is the appropriate thing to do as well, but neither knows for whom. Meanwhile, Seth is crying in the bathroom, concerned about his future. Jared enters the bathroom as well, but when Seth expresses his fears, Jared shows little concern. Eric returns to the workplace for a day because he is afraid of losing all of his benefits, including his health care. He meets with Sarah, who apologizes for everything and adds that she did pass Eric's warning on to Jared and John several weeks ago but she was disregarded. A few moments later, the plan was ready to go. Under Jared's watchful eye, Sam addresses his staff and informs them that they must sell everything before the end of the day. As they might guess, 
This means they will lose their jobs and potentially damage their careers, so the firm will pay them a 1.4 million incentive for selling 93% of their individual assets. If the floor as a whole sells 93% of the total, that's an extra 1.3 million per piece. Sam also apologizes for everything, telling them that this is unusual even for someone like him, who has been with the firm for 34 years, and says he is proud of everyone on his team and that their abilities have been put to good use. The traders instantly go into action, selling to everyone who will give them a chance. Their counterparties eventually get suspicious of such a quick sale, so the firm begins selling at a significant loss, but at least they are able to get rid of the majority of the bad assets. Jared visits Sam to congratulate him on a job well done and to inform him that he must begin sending people home immediately. He also informs him that because he backed up the sale, he will not be fired because the higher-ups are pleased with the outcome. This enrages Sam, and he rushes over to John, who is eating lunch quietly as if it were just another usual workday. Sam wants his options to be released and for him to be out since he is done with the company after this fiasco, but John needs him to stay there for him for the next 24 months, after which he will gladly let him go. This is insufficient to cleanse Sam's conscience, and John considers Sam's guilt amusing. He believes this is simply money paper that isn't even real. They'd always operated a dirty operation. Sam just didn't want to acknowledge it. Sam agrees to stay, but mainly for financial reasons, not because he agrees with John's beliefs. John expresses gratitude and informs Peter that he will not only keep his job but will also be promoted. Sam returns to his former residence later that evening to bury his euthanized dog in the front yard. His ex-wife sees him there and almost calls the cops until she understands who he is and informs him that he no longer lives there. Sam explains to his ex-wife that this is the only place his dog belongs, so she agrees to let him do his thing. However, before returning to the house, she informs Sam that their sins company also suffered significant losses, but they avoided bankruptcy.